Well, we got so many things to talk about with that, with respect to the impeachment. You know, we could probably spend the whole show on impeachment. But I'll tell you, it's interesting to me what the Democrats are doing because they they passed the two articles of impeachment, and now they don't want to actually send them over to the Senate. I was going to ask you about that. Why is that? Well, you know, there's a lot of theories out there. Most people are taking the theory that it's because they don't think that the impeachment will succeed in the Senate, and so they're putting off sending it over for one reason or another so it doesn't just get blown out of the water. Now, I don't know if that's the reason because, you know— That's a good reason. They just want to keep it going. They want to drag it out, yes. and, and this is the impeached president, although you know, there's some question constitutionally whether he has been impeached if they haven't actually transmitted the articles to the Senate. I mean, is that a true impeachment if they haven't passed it along for the Senate trial? Now, of course, the Senate trial will be presided over by Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, John Roberts, and the vote count will need to be two-thirds to actually move forward with convicting the president. It's funny that they use the conviction and trial language when they're saying, oh, this is just a political process. It's not a criminal process. And remember, the reason they want to say it's not a criminal process so they can get around the Sixth Amendment right to confront your accusers, the right to call witnesses in your defense. They want to get around that and say the president shouldn't have any of those rights. And, of course, during the House impeachment proceedings, which were a complete farce, frankly, they didn't give the president any of those rights. They never gave the minority party, the Republicans, the opportunity to call any witnesses or put on any evidence or, or frankly, really even do anything. It was, it was a complete start-to-finish railroading. They had, a, they had a conclusion in mind when they started, and of course this started, if you look at the news stories, they were talking about impeaching the president before he even took office. Before he took the oath. Before he took the oath of office. So this has been going on the entire time he's been president. And then, of course, you got the Democrats who now want to say that they're thoughtfully dealing with this. They're prayerfully dealing with this. They're really saddened by this. And, you know, I hope that the folks at home and maybe at work today, if anybody's if anybody's working today, and I know some of us are, uh, I hope that you all don't fall for that because the Democrats sure do think that we're pretty stupid to buy that kind of nonsense, particularly when we see them at their Capitol Hill wine and cheese party celebrating the impeachment. And there are photos of those that you can find on the web, although you're going to have to look for them because the mainstream media is absolutely 100 percent in their pockets. And so the mainstream media is not going to share with you any of that kind of information that would cause you to question the narrative that the media and the Democrats want you to buy into. Is it strange for me to think, it was kind of weird, how did the pastors all of a sudden, right after that, come out and start, you know, pull Trump out of office? Why was the timing on that right after the impeachment as far as the uh, Democrats? You know, that's something that I I saw that, Christianity Today. It was one magazine, and I think it was the editor maybe of the magazine, or the publisher who said that. I you know, I didn't dive into that real deeply. I did see it. And the thing is, if you notice that right after that, Franklin Graham, who's Billy Graham's son, came out too. and said, you know, I've never shared this and I wouldn't share it publicly except for that this statement was made in this magazine, this evangelical magazine, that Trump ought to be removed from office. And I just want to tell you, my dad Billy Graham voted for him in twenty sixteen and believed that Trump was the right man at the right time for our country. So I thought that was a pretty interesting comeback. I mean, here's the thing. By and large, the evangelical community is is strongly in support of President Trump. That's what I thought. Now, I don't think that means that they approve of all of his personal behavior. I, I think that, you know, clearly— I don't think a lot of us do. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But he's our president, and let's look at what he's accomplishing— And yes, he's a rough around the edges kind of New York kind of a guy, and that's his personality. But maybe that's the kind of person we need, because can you imagine someone else standing up to all this pressure over all this time? Absolutely not. I mean, I was never a huge fan of the president being such an egomaniac. But I'll tell you what, if he wasn't such an egomaniac, I think he would have stepped down and just said, you know what, I'm sorry, forget about it, you know. I'll go back to enjoying my life instead of being under a constant assault, constantly being slandered by the media, 
et cetera. So I thought the same. I told friends that. I said, I don't know why he doesn't just throw his arms up and say, I give up, you know. I couldn't. I, I tried. I don't think I could take it. I'll be honest with you. I don't think I could take it. But maybe that's why we needed such an egomaniac like he is, because he's not going to give it up. He's not going to just shirk away and go and away quietly. he is quietly. ripping and ready to do another four years. <laughs> In fact, you know, they say he feeds on this stuff and this sort of, you know, makes him gives him more energy for the fight when when you're throwing punches at at the president. Of course, we're using that that idea of figuratively throwing punches, not the only thing that scares, literally. The only thing that scares me is the next four years. You know, he did everything this his way this four years. Mm -hmm. The next four years. You know, he, he could look at it and go, what do I got to lose? I could do anything. Yeah, yeah, well. So it's a little little frightening what he could do. Well. Nothing negative, but I mean just the things we'd hear. Well, we'll see what happens, you know, because I think the way it's going right now, I mean, I, you know, somebody was asking me the other day, some friends of mine who live inside the Beltway, and they're, they're kind of D.C. insiders, and they were asking me, what do you think the Democrats, who are they going to nominate, and then, you know, who's going to actually be able to beat Trump, if anybody? And I said, well, you know, of the slate of candidates or potential candidates that they've got right now, I don't see a single one who could beat Trump, period. Now, the only thing that I could see happening, and this has been talked about, is Hillary Clinton jumping back into the race. You know, she just cannot get enough. She's a glutton for punishment, as we would say. She cannot get enough. And I don't know if you saw those pictures of her recently, but she's obviously had some, some work done, as we would say, some work done. She's got those rosy cheeks and everything's very smooth, far too smooth for a lady of her extensive experience. And, you know, she thought she won last time, so she was close enough where she thinks this could just happen. Well, that's what she'll say, right? I beat him before, I can beat him again. You know, which is, of course, part of the nonsense and the narrative that the media enables. And you got people like Elizabeth Warren out there saying we're going to get rid of the Electoral College. OK, well, you're going to have to change the Constitution to do that because that is ensconced in the Constitution. And I don't know if you check, but it isn't the easiest thing in the world to do to change the Constitution. It might take a while. Well, it's not easy. It's not easy to do. Now, what's interesting is, is I hear all this, you know, discussion and saying she won the popular vote. And that just kind of that that kind of sticks in my craw, as I like to say. Because the truth is, there is no popular vote. That's not how we elect the president. We elect the president through the electoral college. That's the vote. So the idea that, well, I won the popular vote, there is no popular vote. That's a nonsensical term that's used. Thank you for listening to The Morgan Streetman Show. We hope you enjoyed what you heard. And if you did, please click like and subscribe to help us out. And remember that we recommend that you exercise your brain at least once a week.